You've been grinding NHL 24, and you are wondering what the best defensemen and goaltenders are to go after. So in this video, I am going to go over what, in my opinion, is the three best left-handed and right-handed defensemen, as well as the two best goaltenders from personal experience, players that I'm going up against, as well as people in my community giving feedback on each of these cards. I need to mention, this has nothing to do with value. This is if you had infinite coins. These are the cards that I would target in a certain order. And again, it's all opinion. Please use your favorite card. Let's rank them. Let's start with the goaltenders. And I want to bring up Dominic Hasek for a couple reasons. One, a lot of people are using him because, I mean, he's Dominic Hasek. We've been asking him to be back into the game for years now. And he's actually been pretty good. Every time I have gone up against a Dominic Hasek card, he's been incredibly effective. I don't know if these people are activating post to post or maybe it's contortionist these usually take about a month to kind of flush out to see what are the good abilities for goaltenders or if they even matter now the thing i do want to mention is that speed is the most important stat for goaltenders this comes straight from the gameplay developers that have had the opportunity to talk to speed dictates all of their motion and if he was ranking you know, which abilities and attributes that they would go after. Speed is number one. So with 89 speed at launch of the game, that's very good. Aggression is another one. That is a trait-based attribute, meaning that the lower the attribute, it does not mean that he does not have good aggression. It simply means that he stays in his net more. And now while that might sound to be not a good thing, the more aggressive the goaltender, the higher up in the crease they are, it's very easy to get a goalie out of position because they're so far out of the net. Usually lower aggression has shown to be the better attribute. So I do want to mention Dominic Hasek here because I think he's in the running for the number two best goaltender in the game. The other one I want to talk about is Linus Ulmark. Every time that I've gone up against Linus Ulmark's base card in NHL 24, it has been brutal. And his speed is much lower at 83, but he is 6'5", 212 with 69 aggression. Nice. Again, we're so early on in the year that there really hasn't been, in my opinion, many goaltenders that have kind of just separated from everybody else. But every time I face Allmark, it's been a battle. However, when it comes to the number one goaltender in the game right now, I don't know how anyone can battle Jacob Markstrom. If you've used him, I haven't had one person tell me that he hasn't been good. He's been simply lights out for me. And again, every time I face anyone with him, it's been a battle. Now, he also has a game day card. I don't think this is worth the value in grabbing. Right now, it's going for about... 15 to 20,000 coins. Now he can get up to an 84 if Calgary wins on Saturday, which could make him pretty interesting. I don't think you need to go out and get this Jacob Markstrom, but if you do, I don't think it's an issue at all. He's just been really good. It's kind of a set it and forget it kind of situation. He's 6'6". Six, six. That's really been the formula for good goaltending in NHL video games. All right, on to left-handed defenseman, and we are going to start at number three with the 86 Nick Lidstrom. Now again, this is in a vacuum. I would not recommend upgrading I cons if you are going to trade them in to go out and get Mario or Gretzky. That being said, you can go the first tier on almost every icon because if you trade in that power-up collectible, you will get it back when you refund it. But once you go to two, you will lose that power-up collectible. You're honestly, in terms of value, better off just spending the 40,000 coin. But for this video, again, we are going over just in a vacuum what the best cards are. Nick Lidstrom's card has been wild. 88 speed, 88 acceleration, 90 agility. His shot is fantastic if you can get shooting boost activated. He's got 93 defensive awareness with two-way defensemen on, and two-way defensemen has been one of the easiest synergies to actually get activated. He's got elite edges, which on a defenseman is very useful simply because it activates without the puck, meaning that you can skate left and right with some of the most agile skaters in the game. And quick pick, it might be a very underrated ability, but it allows them to actually make a motion to intercept the pass. I don't know about you, but forced cross ice passes are still the issue. Nick Lidstrom will help with that. And even where you would think he might lack a little bit, he's got 86 body checking, which is more than enough at this stage of the game. He's been a fantastic card and one of the best icons. Coming in at number two is the 87 Kevin Lowe. Six foot two, 200, again, to a defenseman. He also has playmaking boost. That one's a bit harder to get activated. Gold Shutdown might be taking over for Truculence in terms of best defensive ability. There's something that was brought up on our podcast. If you haven't listened to it, go give it a listen. Where my co-host Padre brought up the fact that the big benefit from Truculence in prior years was the shove because when you were you know being held off or the puck was being protected by somebody even with unstoppable force if they had truculence you could shove them off the puck but now because of the new hitting changes it's really beneficial to just hold down the hit and charge up for a big one to absolutely obliterate your opponent because of the small animation you get when shoving it can leave you completely flat-footed 
Every defenseman that I've used so far with shutdown has been lights out. That being said, he's got 88 speed and acceleration, which is extremely useful at this stage of the game. Almost perfect defensive awareness and 86 body checking as well. His other two abilities I don't think are anything special. You're not going to want to activate for the cost, even though they are very low. But Kevin Lowe comes in at number two. And coming in at number one, the 87 Brian Leach does have speed boost as well as two-way defenseman. Anyone with speed boost is obviously going to be important because it is one of the better synergies to get activated. It's just very difficult to. He's got gold stick em up, silver 1T, and silver elite edges. I already touched on elite edges. If you are going to put 1T on any card, a defenseman is what I would recommend just because it is very easy to get the one-time situation off. And stick em up does have its value as well. It's not as important as shutdown or truculence in my opinion, but it can still cause a nuisance. He's one of the best defensive skaters with 92 speed, 91 acceleration, and great endurance as well. A good shot in the high 80s. And the body checking is a little low at 82. But I think stick him up can probably make up for that with a good stick checking stat as well. Brian Leach has also been one of the best shooters and offensive defensemen that I've faced. And from anyone that I've talked to that has made all the team builders, he's been one of the best defensemen. On to left handed defenseman, and this might be a hot take. But Brooks Orpik is an honorable mention. He's not going to be in the top three. I think he is still a very good card and easily the best headliner from week one. He's got almost max defensive awareness, which is an extremely important stat. Body checking's fantastic. Everything is great on this card outside of his acceleration being down at 85. And he does get truculence, obviously. 88 speed is awesome. I haven't seen many people use him. I've used his lower overalls and it's been nothing special he does crush everyone don't get me wrong but offensively i just don't really feel very strong with him with the puck he's only got 71 deking not that you're going to be doing a ton of deeks with him but his puck control at 81 as well just not super elite here's my number three right-handed defenseman dan girardi this card has probably been my most noticeable card in nhl 24 87 speed and acceleration does not play like that when he gets going and breaks the puck out of the zone I feel like he's got 90 plus. Everyone that I've talked to that has this 84 team builder has mirrored what I've been saying, that this card is just nuts. There's always defensemen at the launch of the game that play far higher than their stats indicate. Think back to like NHL 22 with uh, Adam Foote and Ulf Samuelson, for example. It just gives those vibes. I don't know if it's the combination of truculence and shutdown, but anytime that you get near an opponent with him, he just throws them off the puck. He's got good defensive awareness, and body checking is great as well. If you can make Dan Girardi on your way to making team builders, you're going to be in a great spot. And to be honest, I actually, once I finish my first team builder, I'm probably going to make Dan Girardi again. Coming in at number two is the X-Factor Kale McCarr. Now, I haven't seen many of these simply because a lot of people that pre-order the game have his 85 training camp card, and there just isn't a lot of urgency to go get his 87. I have seen it a couple times. And his skating, if you can break the puck out by just beelining it from your own net going coast to coast he's almost impossible to stop because once he gets up to top speed there's like three cards in the entire game that can even keep up with him or come anywhere close elite edges on him is also extremely impactful because once you get into the corners you get down low again there's just not many cards in the game that can keep up with the shiftiness when he goes left and right his body checking has been obviously pretty hit hard but if you charge up your hits by holding down circle or b if you're using total control and then actually use hitting correctly i haven't had any issues with my training camp kill mccarr which is why he comes in at number two and coming in at number one the 87 patrice breeze wall again everyone that i've reached out to that has made breeze wall confirms that this card is just an absolute weapon 89 speed 92 acceleration 91 acceleration if you can get the accelerator boost activated but even with just two-way defenseman on he just is mean he hits hard and sneaky decent offensive abilities to go with one of the best defensive ones in truculence seeing eye and heat seeker from the point if you know how to take tip shots they aren't nearly as effective as they were in 23 but i've had three or four goals that have gone in just wrist shots from the point because i'm waiting for a screen to be set up seeing i will freeze the goaltender a little bit it's a very underrated ability and not really one i think that as the game goes along you should look to activate just because there's a inherent cost to it but still very effective patrice breeze in my opinion the number one right-handed defenseman that's gonna do it for my goaltender and defenseman rankings let me know what you think in the comment section down below in the cards that you've been using i want to give an update as well on my website guys on leaguegaming.com slash hut hub my database is almost live and ready to go for this year so if you are looking for immediate information on all the newest cards you're looking to see what new synergy work with different cards things like that you can view it all on hut hub and again i'll have updates and a full-on video that will show you how to work and use the site 
as well as the new app that will be launching very shortly. So you will have an app that will be able to view all of your cards in Hockey Ultimate Team almost immediately after they are released. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.